Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us this week. We're going to be getting into the Word of God, and I tell you what, I am excited about this series that we're doing on what is faith, who has faith, how do you receive faith, how do you operate in faith. We're talking about everything that has to do with the operation of faith. And in the process, we're also answering some questions from you folks out there that watch the netcast. And oh, by the way, let me tell you something really, really important. A lot of you, and I thank you for this, a lot of you subscribe to this netcast via what's called an RSS feed. Really simple syndication. RSS. This may be too technical for you and you may not know anything about the term, but you probably do know that you can subscribe through iTunes, you can subscribe through the Miro uh, player, the Miro community, which is at getmiro.com, and I'll put that up here. Uh, you can subscribe through Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y dot com. There's just all kinds of places that you can get this program. But if you have subscribed via an RSS feed, I need you to do something for me. Make a note of the feed. It is probably something like netcast.speakfaith.tv, okay? Make a note of that because it's going to change, all right? And this is the new URL that you will need to subscribe to. Now, if that's really, really technical, just make a note of it, and I'm going to be mentioning this for the next few netcasts. It hasn't switched over yet, but if you in your subscription don't get your program next time automatically, then just come to our website and resubscribe, okay? You got that? If you have problems with your subscription, go back to our website, which is wofm.org. Go back to that website and sign up for our netcast, our video netcast, again, and you'll get it. Okay, now the, the, the advantage to this is we're going to change our website. We're going to change things up and put all of our video out on the website, specifically the wfm.org website. Right now it's at speakfaith.tv and that's fine. It'll remain there, It'll still be there, but we're going to change it up on our regular WFM website. So stay tuned. I'm going to repeat that string again here that you need to subscribe to. And I encourage you to do that. And as usual, you can always subscribe through iTunes. That will remain the same. It will change in the background, but it will work out okay. Uh, Miro, all of those locations will still be the same. All right? Okay. Now, I do want to mention another little housekeeping thing here. Again, remind you about WOFR.org. Okay, I'll put that up here. WFR.org, where you can hear the best, the greatest word of faith teachers and preachers and ministers and music on WOFR. Don't you want to hear great music like David Ingalls and Kenneth Copeland and Stan Pody? and all kinds of folks that are singing the Word of Faith message. Amen. That's available on WFR.org, as is great teaching. As a matter of fact, our radio program is on Monday through Friday, Eastern Time. Okay, this is Eastern Time at 1130, right after Kenneth Copeland. He comes on at 11 o'clock. We come on at 1130, Monday through Friday, on WFR.org. And then, of course, we also have our Sunday program, which is actually the audio of this video, okay? So you may be hearing this on WFR on a Sunday morning at 9.30 until 10 o'clock. We also follow Brother Copeland there. Praise God. Amen? All right, let's get into the Word of God. We were talking last time about our key scripture, which is 1 John chapter 2, 
Verse 6, He that saith he abideth in him, this is the King James this time, meaning abiding in Jesus, ought himself also so to walk even as he, Jesus, walked. We need to walk in our daily life every day just like Jesus did. You know, there's, there was a popular Christian thing <laughs> here not many years ago that was called, What Would Jesus Do? And it was a little bracelet you could wear that said, WWJD, What Would Jesus Do? And people were always asking, What Would Jesus Do? What Would Jesus Do? Well, we need to do what Jesus would do. We need to walk like Jesus walked in his earthly ministry. Now, he's gone on uh, up into heaven. He sits there uh, at the right hand of the Father God. He intercedes for us. He's there as our high priest, praise God. He's there for us. But in his earthly ministry, he was ministering as a man anointed by the Holy Ghost with power from the Holy Ghost. And that's exactly what we're to do today. We're to walk out our daily lives anointed by the Holy Ghost, doing what we hear the Father say and, we, and doing what we see the Father do, which is in the Word of God. So we can do what Jesus did. That's what we've been talking about. Now, last week... <laughs> I said we were going to answer a question, then I got off on a preach, and I didn't quite get to the question. <laughs> Sorry about that. But let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. The question was, in case you don't remember, are the five-fold ministry really available today? Are they really available to us here right now? Has God changed his ministry and his method of operation in the ministry? Well, it says in Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm going to actually start in um, verse, well, let's start in verse 11. I was going to start before that, but let's go ahead and start in verse 11. And he, talking about Jesus, gave some, now this is some in the body of Christ, not all are called in these five areas, but he gave some, some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. So there's the uh, apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. That's five-fold ministry, five areas of ministry. Now, we're very familiar with pastors. We should have a, a pastor in our local church, praise the Lord, where you receive the ministry of the pastor. We're familiar with teachers. I'm a teacher of the Word of God. I'm teaching the Word right now uh, over this video netcast. Uh, evangelist, we're familiar with great evangelists, you know, people like T.L. Osborne, people like Billy Graham, great evangelist, the evangelist ministry. Then prophets, we know that there are still prophets. Brother Kenneth E. Hagin was a prophet of faith, and he was a modern-day prophet uh, before he went home to be with the Lord. Then apostles. Now, this per person that wrote me particularly was concerned about the apostles' ministry. They were concerned that people were calling themselves apostles and they were had business cards that said apostle so-and-so. And they said, can you really have apostles of today? Are there really apostles? See, where people get confused on this is they think about the 12 apostles of Jesus, you know, Peter and the whole rest of them. Those 12 apostles, Brother Kenneth E. Hagin calls the apostles of the Lamb. They had unique positions as apostles. Now, they were called as apostles, yes, but they were unique in that they were eyewitnesses of Jesus' earthly ministry and how he operated in earthly ministry and were kind of the core group, the very core of the, his ministry team. And so they hold a special place. You're not going to have more than those 12 first apostles of the Lamb. Amen? You know, now, yes, when, uh, when Judas went and hung himself, when Judas uh, died, they did replace him with Matthias, okay? But he still had seen the earthly ministry of Jesus. He still had seen the operation of Jesus in his earthly ministry and was part of a core group. He just wasn't the inner core of those 12 apostles of the Lamb. But anyway, the point is, that's how they were unique, okay? Okay. That's the 12 apostles most people think about. But the word apostle simply means one who is sent. Okay? One who is sent. Matter of fact, one way we might 
use the word apostle today is as a missionary. Now, not every missionary is an apostle. Don't get me wrong, okay? But there are people who are called as apostles, modern day apostles, not the 12 apostles of the Lamb, but just regular apostles, have this ministry gift that are called and go away from their home base and set up churches and establish churches and are missionaries to a given area. And they, what's unique about the apostles' ministry is because they pioneer works, they may operate as a pastor. They may operate as a teacher. They most likely will operate as an evangelist as they preach to people in that local area to, to establish a church. And they may operate in a prophetic ministry as they establish that local church. However, they're really called as an apostle. So it would be beneficial to just give a quick rundown of the callings of these five-fold ministry. The apostle, as we said, is a sent one. He goes to places to establish churches and works. As I said, today, modern time, we would think of them as a, 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 a missionary. However, they do much more than that, okay? Then uh, there are those who are called as prophets. Now, these are fourth tellers. These are ones who speak God's mind on a given topic. Now, it doesn't always mean they're telling the future. That's the term prophet that comes from really the Eastern mysticism and occult world. No, a prophet is one who speaks forth the mind of God. He may speak with a word of wisdom, which might be the future. He may speak with a word of knowledge where he might understand something that's going on, you know, that he would have no normal knowledge or access to. But he's a prophet. He's a spokesman. He's a forth teller for the Lord. Then the evangelist, of course, we know, preaches the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and gets folks born again. But more than that, if you look at the New Testament evangelist, you'll find that the New Testament evangelist also operated in gifts of healings and miracles. You look at Philip's ministry. Philip is the person in the book of Acts that we are specifically told operated in the, uh, the ministry gift of a prophet. He is called Philip the prophet. And uh, I'm sorry, Philip the evangelist. I was thinking about the prophet's ministry earlier. No, Philip the evangelist. All right. And as an evangelist, he preached the word of God and he had miracles and signs and wonders and healing and cast out devils in his ministry as he preached there, all right? So that is our New Testament uh, indicator of what an evangelist ministry is. Now you may say, well, yeah, but, but Billy Graham, he didn't you know, have signs, wonders, and miracles. Well, actually, there were certain things, healings and so forth, that did take place in his crusades. Now that wasn't his primary method of, of ministry. I'm not taking anything away from his evangelism uh, and preaching the Word of God. Praise God. Millions, literally, of people have been born again through his ministry. Praise God for that. But he was trained as a Baptist minister. And, of course, he's not going to be, you know, doing signs, wonders, and miracles because he didn't believe that they were available for today, okay? That's just talking about Billy Graham specifically. But now T.L. Osborne, he's an evangelist. He preached the Word of God to millions and millions of people. And there were many signs and wonders and, and people healed and uh, the dead raised and all kinds of exciting things happened in his ministry that again gave credence to the fact that he was and is an evangelist, okay? So that's the evangelist ministry. Then the pastor, we're much more familiar with the pastor's ministry. A pastor is one who is the head of the local church. He's the captain who steers the ship. I like that, that phrase or that term that you used about being the pilot of a ship. That's actually used in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Verse 28, the, the, the phrase in Greek there is talking about being captain of a ship. He's the one that's in charge. He's the one that has the vision. He's the one that leads and directs that local church. Amen. Now, a pastor might also be a teacher. 
There are also teachers who aren't pastors, okay? I know a lot of people these days are saying that this term or phrase here where it says pastor and teacher are inextricably linked together. You must be a pastor and a teacher, or you must be, if you're a teacher, you have to be a pastor. No, 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 no. This is just the list of the five. He lists them as apostle, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers, and he adds that in. But it doesn't mean that teachers have to be pastors. That's just the way the English uh, translation here is constructed. All right? No, a teacher is simply a teacher of the Word of God. One who teaches the Word, just like we do here on the netcast. God told me to proclaim the Word of Faith, be a showcase of ministries, train people to fulfill the Word of God, and that's what we do here on the Word of Faith netcast. And so I'm teaching you from the Word of God, using my notebook computer here that has the Word on it, from the Word of God, teaching you, and that is the teacher's ministry. It is just as anointed a ministry. It's just as powerful a ministry as these other four areas. And yet, sometimes folks kind of forget about it. They, they think of it as just Sunday school teachers. Well, not every Sunday school teacher is called as a teacher. Called and anointed with a specific ministry gift of the teacher. Now, I love being a teacher. I love teaching the Word of God. It's, it's my heart's desire to do that. Now, I pastored for a time in two different churches, and I was an associate pastor in another church. And all of that time, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, down in my heart, something wasn't right with me trying to stand in that pastor's ministry. Why? The anointing was not there to do it. Now, I did just say, Lord, if you need somebody to pastor, I'll do it. I had people clamoring, wanting me to pastor a local church and, and help them in that local church. And so that's how I got into it, my desire to help, but I wasn't anointed to do the job. And if you're not anointed to do the job, you're going to have a hard time, and I had a hard time. But I tell you what, teaching the Word of God, I've never had a hard time with that. I've always enjoyed it, I've always loved it, and I've always had great success with the anointing teaching the Word of God. I'm not, by nature, a public speaker type person. You know what I'm saying? But when I get up to teach the Word, it's just something arises within me, that anointing, and I begin to teach, and it's strong, and it's powerful. And as you've seen over the, particularly these last few netcasts, whoo, it can just get a hold of you, and just, I get to preach myself happy, hallelujah. <laughs> and you get to join in on that and enjoy the teaching of the Word of God. So that's great. Well, that's the teacher's ministry. It is a unique, anointed, and separate ministry from the other fivefold ministry gifts. But notice, all of these gifts are given for something. There's a reason they're given. Let's look at the very next verse, verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, that's the maturing of the saints. You know, perfection, people look at that and say, oh, I didn't know anybody could be perfect in this world. No, he's talking about maturity the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. In other words, you've got to work in the local church ministry that you are set in. If you're doing what you're called to do, that may be the helps ministry, that may be just swabbing the floor of the bathrooms, whatever, <laughs> whatever need you may have, you can do work in that local church ministry. Some of you may be called into an area of fivefold ministry. But we are to mature the saints to do the work of the ministry. We're to mature you as a believer so that you can do what you're called to do. Okay? Now, you say, well, Dr. Bill, I don't feel called to do anything. I'm just a, a carpenter. I'm just a, uh, you know, a piano tuner. <laughs> I don't know what it is you do in your regular job. And you may be called to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But... I dare say, if you're part of a local church, you can lend your hand, you can put your hand to something. You can ask your pastor, Pastor, what do you need me to do? Maybe it's run the soundboard. Pastor, what should I do? Maybe it's be a musician. Maybe you have talents in that area. There's something you can do in that local church. There's something you can do in the ministry. Maybe, and this is a legitimate thing, I'm not just saying this, you may be called as just a giver. Now, I say just, 
There's nothing wrong or nothing demeaning about being a giver, but someone who is called to go out and work a job, make tons of money, praise the Lord, and put that into the gospel, that's another area you can help in your local church and in ministries that you support. So all of these areas are ways that you can help do what this says. Perfect the saints to do the work of the ministry for the edifying or building up. The word edify comes from a word that literally means to charge up like a battery. Okay? A battery gets charged, built up. Have you ever heard somebody talk about, I need to build up my charge? Well, that's what that's about. Another term that's used for this is edifice, like building up a building, a brick at a time. You put down a foundation, you put a row of bricks, and then another row of bricks. You build up that building. And as you build the building, it gets bigger and more stronger and, and more beneficial to what it's called to do. Well, the same thing with the body of Christ. Now, the question that I got was, are these five-fold ministries still in operation today? Well, let's look at verse 13. Verse 13 tells us how long they're going to be around. Well, that answers the question, doesn't it? Remember what we said we're going to ask the Bible what the answer is? Jesus is the Word made flesh, so we're going to ask Jesus. We're going to ask His Word. We're going to find out from the Word what the answers to the, these questions are. Well, the question is, is the fivefold ministry still in operation? Well, it says in verse 13, the very next verse, after verse 12, till we all, the till means until. In other words, this is a time delimiter. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. Well, let me ask you this. Has the entire body of Christ come together in the unity of the faith? I'm asking. No, I don't think so yet. And until we all come unto the knowledge, the full understanding and knowledge of the Word of God, or the Son of God, do we have all knowledge of the Son of God? <laughs> no, not yet. Unto a perfect or mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Have we, as the body of Christ, attained to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ? No, not yet. <laughs> Still got some time on that one, I think. So here's what I'm saying. According to this, we haven't attained that yet. So according to this, the five-fold ministry is still in operation. We still need the apostle. We still need the uh, evangelist. We still need the prophet. We still need the pastor and the teacher. All right, we need all five-fold ministries working together to help mature the body of Christ. Amen? So no, they haven't passed away yet. So what do we do? We need these five-fold ministries and we need to sit under a local pastor. We need to hear the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. And as we hear the Word of God ministered from the fivefold ministry, we'll grow up and we'll operate in what God's called us to do. Do you see that? Do you understand that? It's simple when you just look at it from the Word of God and look at what the Word says and not what man's opinion is. See, man's opinion is, well, there's no more apostles anymore. Well, there are no more 12 apostles of the Lamb that saw Jesus' earthly ministry in operation. No. But that's just a, a, a classification of apostle. No, an apostle, a sent one that goes out to establish churches, they're still around. Evangelists are still around. Prophets are still around. Brother Kenneth Copeland is a prophet and a teacher in the body of Christ. Pastors, guess what, are still around, praise the Lord. And teachers, praise the Lord, are still around. And I'm glad to be one. Amen. Praise the Lord. I enjoy teaching the Word of God. Well, I'll tell you what, we're just about out of time. Let me encourage you to do a couple of things here. First, go to our website, WOFM. Dot .org, I'll put it up on here on the screen again, WOFM, Word of Faith Ministries, dot .org, which stands for Organization, Nonprofit Organization. Go to that website. We have teaching. We have articles. We have videos. And as I said at the beginning of the program, make a note now of this link right here, which is going to be soon, not yet, but soon, going to be the new link to subscribe to the video netcast. It's changing. 
and I want to give you advance notice of that, okay? So if your subscription doesn't work like you expect it to, go to our website and resubscribe and you'll be okay, all right? And of course, it'll always be on the website for you, all right? Now, next thing I want you to do, of course, WFR, W-O-F-R dot O-R-G, Word of Faith Radio. I mean, we're talking seven days a week, 365 days a year, and of course, like I said last time, this is... This is a leap year, so that's 366 days this year of the Word of God on Word of Faith Radio. Exciting stuff happening there. Praise the Lord. And just all kinds of good things happening in the body of Christ right now. You need to be part of your local church. You need to get in that local church and be a vital functioning part in that local church. Amen? Also, you can write us here at Word of Faith Ministries, our address, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262, and you can always write us at our email address, and that is drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. Write us at that address, check out our website, get ready for that new subscription, and remember until next time to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.